Hi, today I want to talk about the engravings that work best with Solo Knight. Before we get into the details of the Solo Knight Gunlancer, I want to talk about the mechanics of the engravings first. To begin, most engravings work in a multiplicative way. For example, you hit 100% with your basic stats, that's your base damage. But if you add the Grudge Engraving level 3, which increases your damage by 20%, you're at 120%, right? But if you add another 16% damage increasing engraving, such as Stabilized Status, you won't be at 136%, but rather 139.2% because engravings stack on each other and the stats multiply. This is why engravings are a huge factor in your overall damage potential, and that is why even a single digit increase in your damage from engravings could dramatically increase your total DPS. Here in Korea, Lost Ark has been out for a long time, so our meta is set in stone. The engravings that we take are in set in stone. There are specific staple engravings that each class takes to min-max their DPS. However, in NA and EU, the game just released. So you won't have access to all these accessories with engravings to maximize on your character. Plus, the meta will constantly change because you guys are still in the early stage of the game. So instead of giving you a list of only the best engravings for the class, I want to share all engravings that could work well with Solo Knight, because gold is expensive and the amount of items out in the market is limited. To begin, the class engraving Solo Knight is the most important. Class engravings in general are the most important for any class, but for Solo Knight, it's even more important to reach level 3, because not only does it increase your critical hit damage for each level, but it increases your critical hit chance. Now, why is crit chance so important? Well, since you have such a high amount of crit damage, and it's your main way of dealing damage, you need to secure as much crit chance as possible to proc that crit damage. In other words, if you don't crit, you will hit like a wet noodle. The next most important engraving is Supercharge. Like I mentioned in the previous video, 60 to 70% of Solo Knight's overall damage comes from Burst Cannon and Charge Stinger, and both of these skills are charge skills, which means it takes a couple of seconds to charge the skills up before releasing the trigger to deal damage. What Supercharge does is that it increases the damage of these skills and decreases the amount of time to charge up these skills. This engraving is a staple as it not only raises your damage, but increases your combat effectiveness. It doesn't matter if you can do a ton of damage if you don't land the skills as head attack or just downright miss the skill entirely. Supercharge will allow you to land your core skills with ease. The next tier 1 engraving is Grudge. On paper, Grudge seems like a double-edged sword. Yes, it increases your damage but you also take more damage from all sources. Now, this engraving seems intimidating at first, but it doesn't really affect you too much. Currently in Korea, Grudge is a staple engraving for every single DPS class in the game. If you don't have Grudge, you'll have a hard time getting into raid parties. So why is Grudge so highly regarded? That's because every engraving in the game either has a condition to activate or a debuff, a type of penalty to balance it out. And the penalty on Grudge is actually very easy to just bypass. All you have to do is not get hit. Now, this could sound like a very Korean advice, but if you think about all the other engravings that either have more severe penalties or activation requirements that are annoying, Grudge is actually not that bad, especially since gun lancers are very tanky to begin with. The benefit of having a 20% flat damage increase at all times far outweigh the debuff that Grudge comes with. So as tier 1 engravings, you want to get Solo Knight and Supercharge to level 3 as fast as possible. Then work on Grudge if you can. However, for Grudge, you want to get this engraving only if you can get level 3 instantly. That is because unlike Solo Knight or Supercharge, the debuff that Grudge comes with is the same for all 3 levels of the engraving. So at level 1, you will have a 20% increased damage debuff. Although the damage increase is small, the debuff will still be there. The debuff can far outweigh the benefits of this engraving in this case. And now, before moving on to tier 2, the wave of second priority engravings, I want to talk about Adrenaline and Precision Dagger first. These two engravings are kind of obsolete on Solo Knight for the general build here in Korea. However, 
These could, could be very top tier engravings for your regions, NA and EU specifically. That is because you guys do not have access to relic gear that bumps up your crit chance yet, unlike here in Korea. So since you guys don't have ways to increase your crit chance outside of base stats and engravings, these two meta-specific engravings could be very good for the American and European solo knights. Adrenaline increases your crit chance and attack with a relatively easy activation condition. Additionally, Adrenaline is good at all levels, 1, 2, and 3, unlike Grudge. The stats are very well balanced at all levels. As for Precision Dagger, it's another way to increase your critical hit chance, but like Grudge, you only want to get this engraving if you can get it to level 3 instantly, as the debuffs are the same for all levels. Although the crit damage debuff might seem severe, it's actually not that bad for Solo Knight, as with the class engraving alone, we are already at 250% crit damage. And with crit damage being an additive stat with diminishing returns, the decrease of 12% crit damage isn't that game breaking. In fact, the crit chance can be more beneficial for you. But keep in mind that Adrenaline is still the much better option. The first engraving I want to talk about in the tier 2 list is Cursed Doll. A very popular choice for a lot of DPS characters here in Korea. Now this engraving increases your attack by 16% but you get less heals. Just like Grudge, this engraving does not have an activation requirement, it's up at all times. The decrease in healing effects could bother you when you first use it, but once you get used to this engraving, it won't bother you too much moving on. The next engraving on this tier is Brawler. Now this engraving is a staple in almost every solo knight build here in Korea. This engraving increases your damage by 25% when you land a head attack. Now this is a 5% higher damage increase than Grudge. Since most solo knight skills have head attack modifiers, you're already attacking from the head anyway. That's why this engraving is pretty good. But do note that if you do not hit the boss with the head attack, you will miss out on that entire 25%. This is why I put this engraving on tier 2, despite it being almost a staple here in Korea. If you aren't skilled enough, or not experienced enough with a specific boss to consistently land head attacks, this engraving will do nothing for you. Now let's move on to tier 3. There are two engravings on this tier, and these two don't have a debuff, but they have specific activation conditions that could be quite bothersome. The first one is stabilized status. This engraving gives you a flat damage increase, but in order to activate this engraving, you have to have your HP at 80% or higher at all times. So this could be another Korean advice engraving, just don't get hit. However, unlike Grudge, this engraving can deactivate with a single hit from the boss if you don't have your shield up. You got hit and lost 20% of your health, you have to either drink a potion or ask your bard or paladin to heal you to activate it again. That is why this engraving could be an annoying experience for you during raids. The other top tier engraving, uh, top tier 3 engraving is Barricade. This is a top tier engraving for combat readiness gun lancers, but not really for solo knight. That is because we lose our shield gauge, our Z skill, fast. So we have to be careful with when and how we activate it. But since most of our damage comes from Burst Cannon and Charge Stinger, if you carefully time your Z activation for the majority of your damage, it could be a decent engraving. Now moving on to the final tier, Tier 4. There are two engravings on this tier as well. The first one is Spirit Absorption. This engraving increases your attack speed and movement speed. For a slow class like Gun Lancer, this engraving is a great quality of life improvement. The final engraving I want to talk about you know, out of all of this is Keen Blunt Weapon. Now this engraving is a very odd one for Solo Knight, as it can do more harm than good for the Solo Knight. This engraving increases your critical hit damage, but it can decrease your overall damage at a certain rate. If you can get your hands on a level 3 blunt weapon, it could be great, especially if you pair it with either Adrenaline or Precision Dagger. Although critical hit damage, unlike flat damage increase from other engravings on this list, is an additive stat with diminishing returns, the 50% crit damage increase is a solid amount. But remember that if you want to equip this engraving, you need to have high crit chance to make the best use of it. But do take note that this engraving will also become obsolete in the future. 
That is because when Relic Gear comes out, your crit damage will go off the charts, and because of diminishing returns, Keen Blunt Weapon will do more harm than good for you. Now that will be the end of this video. And in a future date, I will upload a video about skill builds and general setup of the Solo Knight.